top on the brief. Another weekend is upon us here in Lagos, but things may even be busy at the FS court in the nation's capital, Abuja, where in just hours about nine verdicts will be in. Governors of Lagos, Kano, Plateau, Bochi, Ebony, Abia, Nasarawa, Zamfara, and Cross River State will find out where the pendulum swings as the justices will give judgment over appeals challenging their victory at the 2023 governorship elections. Now, petitions ranging from validity of nomination, non-compliance with electoral laws, to poll results cancellation will be determined by the Supreme Court today. While some governors are seeking in affirmation to the judgment of the lower courts well others are asking the supreme court to obtain the decision of the court of appeal now our reporters are inside and outside the courtroom to capture every piece of the action others are stationed at suspected security pressure points to give us a pulse of the city centers as the event unfold throughout the day while Kano state is already being proactive the commission of police is warning against any unlawful act Now, but it's a different feeling for their colleague, Governor Umoino of Akwaibum State, who is already a victor at the Supreme Court. Has been affirmed his, uh, the court has affirmed this election as a validly elected governor of Akwaibum State under the platform of the People's Democratic Party. The APS court dismissed the appeals of the three parties challenging the outcome of the election that held in March last year. This comes after a panel led by Justice Owani Abaji dismissed three separate appeals of all the, of the All Progressives Congress, Young Progressives Party, and the Action Alliance of allegations of non-qualification non of the governor following alleged WIAC certificate forgery, which he denies. The Supreme Court therefore upheld the November 2023 ruling of the Court of Appeal, which dismissed the forgery case against the governor. What the Supreme Court has done has been to confirm that um, Pastor Moino is not only the governor of Akwaibom State, but that he has genuine certificates, I think that's the more important thing. Because that, dis that matter had already been decided in another Supreme Court case. Now, the governor has also reacted to that judgment. Excited, Governor, let's take a listen to him. Well, I'm in awe. I'm in awe of who God is and what God can do. So, return all glory to God, the beginning and the ending of all matters. And... Um, we are collective. We are in ESCO meeting and um, the, the rapturous joy that came. And we thank God. We thank the judiciary who have shown again that they are the last hope of the common man. Now, staying with the judiciary, the former Minister of Power and Steel, Mr. Alu Agunoye, has been granted bail in the sum of 50 million naira by Justice Jude Nwebweze of the FCT High Court. Mr. Agunoye was arraigned on seven count charge, bordering on fraudulent award of a contract and official corruption preferred against him by the EFCC, who is investigating him over the six billion naira Mambila hydropower contract. The judge had ordered him to be remanded in Kujia Correctional Center pending hearing and ruling of the appeal application. However, counsel to the former minister, Mr. Adiola Dedipe, had, among other things, prayed the court to grant bail to his clients in liberal terms, arguing that Mr. Agunoye is not a flight risk, but that it was opposed. But that was actually opposed by the prosecution counsel. After listening to both counsels, the justice granted a 50 million naira bail to the defendant and ordered him to produce two reputable shortages in the likes of who are resident in the FCT, amongst other conditions, and adjourned the matter to February the 12th. Now, let's move on to other stories. With river state politics, blinking may be a luxury the power brokers and watchers can't afford. Perhaps is why Governor Simini Laya Fubara met with President Bola Tinubu at the villa on Thursday. Mr. Fubara, who arrived at the presidential villa at about 5.40 p.m., went straight to the office of the president where they met behind closed doors. Although the reason for the meeting is unknown, it may not be unconnected with the recent political feud between him and the FCT minister, Mr. Nyeson Wike. And this is the first time the governor is visiting the president at the villa since signing that eight-point controversial resolution brokered by President Bola Tinubu. Let's move on now. Nigeria has sadly suffered more losses in human lives after a fresh attack by a suspected bandit has left 10 persons dead and several others wounded in Kuka Babangida village in GBR local government area of Katsina state. Among those killed were the Kuka Babangida village head. His name, Mr. Zorun Katsina, along with his four children. 
Resident told Channels Television on phone that the bandits invaded the village in the early hours of Thursday at about 1.30 a.m. when most of the residents were quite asleep. And that's a very, very sad development. But we'll continue to follow the story to get the official statement of the police. Others now, now, if you are here to make money, resign. That's the no-holds-barred charge by the Minister of Aviation and Aerospace Development, Mr. Festus Keamo, to the newly appointed heads of the agencies in the ministry during their official induction ceremony in Abuja. Mr. Keamo believes the chief executives and directors should carry out their responsibilities optimally, as outlined in the ministry's key performance indicators. Some of the KPIs include to ensure strict compliance with safety regulations to support the growth of local airlines and operators and human capital development within the aviation industry. The uniqueness of the aviation ministry is that unlike most other ministries, most of the work of the aviation ministry is in its agencies, not in the main ministry. I'll be very critical of those who even think that they know me, who are close to me. I will not tolerate non-performance. If you think your aim is to make money in public office, resign today here before you leave here. Give me your resignation letter. Straight talk, resign or serve. That's as simple as it is. Now, in about three days, the nation's Bureau of Statistics will release the December inflation numbers, but we are already seeing projections. The latest is coming from the economic advisory firm, Financial Derivatives Company, who are projecting a 0.5% increase to 28.7% for December headline inflation against 28.2% in November 2023. Although it will mark a new record high amid the impact of the falling value of the Naira and the rising cost of living, the economics, uh, Economist Intelligence Unit however forecast that the country's inflation may fall down to as much as 23.6% in 2024 and even lesser in 2025 they pegged it as 17%. Now outside our shores while hostilities continue on the Gaza Strip between Israel and Hamas South Africa is making a case for the Palestinians at the UN stop court alleging that Israel's plan to destroy Gaza comes from the highest level of state those were the words as argued by South African lawyers when it presented its case accusing Israel of genocide at the International Court of Justice. South Africa also called on the court to order Israel to cease military operations in Gaza, but Israel, which will present its defense today, has vehemently rejected the accusation. They call it baseless accusation. The courts will deliver only an opinion on the genocide allegation, although it is being closely watched by the UN. To the exciting world of sports, we're counting down. It's just about 24 hours, but after 40 years of waiting and over $1.5 million uh, in investment, well, Abidjan is getting ready for the exciting uh, tournament that will shake the entire continent as everybody heads to that city. And you can see along the street, vendors are done, football shirt and fans blow for Vuzelas, while lively chants rising in the streets of Abidjan. 24 teams will play for pride and prize from Saturday compared to just eight in 1984. So that's the outlook of uh, our top stories for today. And there's a lot coming up from the Supreme Court. That's where our attention is. And we'll discuss this just after the break. Join us again.